You are not the problem. To our teachers who are teaching our children in our public education system, you're not the problem. To our emergency responders, our police officers and firefighters and sheriff's deputies and state patrol officers, you're not the problem. To those healthcare workers and municipal workers, you're not the problem. The problem we have right now is with the current leadership in the state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin a great place to live and to raise a family. You should be thanking them for that service rather than demonizing them, as the governor has been fond to do along with his Republican cohorts. But unfortunately, the assault on all of this isn't just happening here in Wisconsin and Madison. It's happening out in Washington. And unfortunately, being led by one of our own members of the congressional delegation, a gentleman by the name of Paul Ryan. that they passed is the wrong direction for this great nation. Now Paul and his Republicans have been whining a little bit, you may have noticed, complaining that we've been demonizing their plan, misrepresenting the fact, scaring people about it, demagoguing on the issue. Well, this reminds me of the 1948 Harry Truman campaign, that whistle stop campaign that he ran. One of the stops, one of the supporters in the crowd yelled out, give him hell, Harry. President Truman responded, I'm not giving them hell. I'm just telling them the truth, and they think it's hell. <laughs> but the truth is, Paul Ryan's Republican budget plan won't end Medicare and the security of health care for our seniors in this nation. They do it by privatizing it and giving them vouchers, vouchers that will be inadequate in covering health care costs, that will double their out-of-pocket expenses of over $6,400 a year and feed them to the wolves, asking them to go out and shop with private health insurance companies, hoping that they can obtain coverage. That's what their plan calls for. But there's a problem with that. The truth is, it's a problem on a couple of levels. Not least there were 70% of the seniors in western Wisconsin, my district alone, rely on Social Security as the primary source of retirement security. They can't afford another $6,400 a year out of pocket for their health care benefits, as Paul Ryan would ask them to. We understand, and maybe you forgot the history of why Medicare was created. Dave Obi was there. But the reason Medicare had to be created to begin with is a simple fact. Private health insurance companies do not want to insure seniors. They're not profitable. As we get older, we consume more health care. Most seniors develop some form of chronic illness or disease. That's why Medicare had to be created to begin with, to guarantee that our seniors had retirement security and peace of mind that have health care coverage as they grow with grace, they grow old with grace and dignity. But that now is all in jeopardy with the Ryan budget plan. And the truth is it doesn't end there. They're calling for a one-third cut in Medicaid fund. Hey, that's Badger Care back here, folks. And the truth is two-thirds of the people on Badger Care on, on Medicaid today are either seniors in nursing homes, individuals with disability, or children from low-income families. You cut that by over one-third, who do you think is going to be paying the price? And the truth is that the Republican budget plan, they will cut drastically Pell Grant opportunities for low-income students, their chance to go on to higher education. What they proposed would immediately affect the 10 million students around the country that receive Pell Grant and kick off over 200,000 from the program entirely. And the, and the truth is they're all doing this while worshiping at the idol of tax breaks for the most powerful, for the most powerful, for the most powerful. Tax breaks for huge oil companies who are raking in record profits. Continued tax breaks for wealthy Wall Street bankers who help drive our economy into the ditch. And I know as a party, we kind of have fun with this a little bit, and we don't mean to pick on Senator Cole or not, but he also gets it, that there's a measure of fairness involved. And before we go to the weakest and most vulnerable, those who can least afford to contribute more. We should be asking those at the top to give a little bit more. For the sake of our students, 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 for the sake of our students. That's the truth of the matter. And I know they don't like to hear it. And quite frankly, I'm not fond of giving advice to my Republican colleagues, but they would probably be better served if they adopt the value system 
of, a, of an iconic athletic hero of ours here in the state of Wisconsin. This gentleman, Aaron Rodgers. saw the story I, I saw the week leading up to the Packers Super Bowl victory. But apparently earlier in the season, Aaron Rodgers sent out this big care package to a former girlfriend of his who's teaching an elementary school class in a low-income school district not too far from Chico, California, where Aaron Rodgers was born. And, and he loaded up the care package with a bunch of school supplies for the kids. But he also put in a bunch of Packer paraphernalia, the Packer jerseys, sweatshirts, and t-shirts and that. And of course, the kids, when they get this from Aaron Rodgers, who walks on water out there, as you can imagine. I mean, their eyes are big and they're a stack. But that's not the only thing that Aaron Rodgers put in that care package. He also included a note to his former girlfriend, the teacher of that class, which read, now just so that we're clear, what you're doing with your life right now is a heck of a lot more important than what I'm doing with my life right now. That's the type of leadership we need in Wisconsin right now. That's the type of leadership that we need in Washington right now. Those are the type of values we need as a nation to make sure that we remain the most competitive, and innovative, and creative nation in the world. And those are the principles we need in order to meet the hope and the promise of the American dream for our children and our grandchildren. Not what the Republicans are serving up here and out in Washington, but those values that Aaron Rodgers gets in his daily life, that's what we need more of. And that's what this election is going to be all about. Now I want to take a moment to pay tribute to a great public servant here in the state of Wisconsin, Senator Herbert yeah. Ford. Now obviously Senator Ford, you're disappointed. great partner of mine for many, many years. You can't replace a person like Senator Cole. To me, he's always represented the embodiment of what great public service should be about. He is so kind and so decent and so civil and works so incredibly hard each day, making sure that the interests of Wisconsinites are put ahead of the powerful special interests that have a grip too often on the things that get decided out in Washington, D.C. that we, we thank you and we pay tribute to you and we wish you Godspeed, and we love you, Senator Cole. Thank you. That's two of the three that we need to pick up. 
in order to turn the state senate back into the majority again. And we can do that. We've got other candidates stepping forward who I think are excellent and can win races from Pat Franklo in the Senate. But we need to find those candidates who can win general elections throughout the state, at the federal, state, and local level. And that's going to be the challenge that we're going to have as a party moving forward. And this is also a challenge we're going to have. You know, because they tend to do these elections a little bit different. For instance, Dan Capain, who's under the gun right now, was, once, was just recently recorded as saying, and I quote, at Mr. Senate the Republican Party meeting this past week, Jeez, I've got a lot of public employee workers in my just a ton of public, uh, uh, public employees. We all got a hope that they're going to be sleeping on July 12th or whenever these elections are going to be. Right? That's Dan Capaghi's idea of democracy. Just a big bottle of sleeping pills. <laughs> but we got a message from Dan Capaghi. We got a message from Scott Walker. We got a message from Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. We here in Wisconsin do not sleep when worker rights are under assault. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful week.